Hey guys, last year I made a video walking through DOSH, New Zealand's highest earning cashback card with no annual fees. In addition to their exceptional 1% cashback, they've continued to innovate. You can spend using your physical Visa card online and in stores, or soon via Apple Wallet and Google Pay. You can save via their Stashes and Strives accounts. Stashes allows you to set money aside for day-to-day -day expenses, like groceries and utilities, earning of course 1% cashback on the spending. While Strives is a bit like a savings account, earning up to 5% at the time this video was made, which as you can see here, is competitive as compared to the banks. And finally, you can also borrow, with Dosh partnering with Avanti Finance, offering personal loans through their app of up to $75,000. There is a lot for us to get through, so let's get into it. As many of you will know, Dosh was founded three years ago by a couple Kiwi mates that met while working in Singapore. Singapore, of course, has a highly developed banking sector, and its government policies encourage strong competition and innovation in the sector. Shane and James, the founders of DOSH, thought to themselves, why can't New Zealanders benefit from the same kind of innovation? From that point forwards, DOSH was born. New Zealand has an extremely concentrated banking sector, dominated by four Australian banks and a much smaller government-owned Kiwi Bank. Even the Reserve Bank acknowledges this issue, with banks providing 94% of private lending, of which 85% is dominated by Australian banks, and they are ripping Kiwis off. The net interest margin is one of the key performance indicators for a bank, as it is the spread between what rate the bank charges borrowers minus the rate the bank pays their depositors. So it's the rate we pay the banks for our mortgages, our personal loans, and our credit cards, minus the rate the bank pays us on our savings accounts and term deposits. KPMG in November last year reported the average net interest margin in Australia is 1.87%. Want to know what those same banks make in New Zealand? The Reserve Bank discloses ANZ and BNZ make 2.4%, while ASB and Westpac make 2.3%. But surely the government is making it easier for Kiwis, well, their own bank charges us a 2.5% margin. Even the Bank of China, owned by the Chinese government, is charging Kiwis less with a margin of just 0.9%. It is clear that the banking sector here in New Zealand needs more competition and innovation to bring relief to already struggling Kiwi households. This is where DOSH comes in. DOSH can be thought of as three services in one, spending, saving, and borrowing. Let's start with spending. DOSH is a digital wallet service. From a user point of view, it simply means you manage your money from your phone. As you can see here, I have my everyday account balance shown in the app, just like internet banking. To get money into the app, I need to top it up from my regular bank account. This is similar to when I top up my transport cards for using buses, trains, and ferries, but a lot smarter, of course. Attached to the digital wallet, I have my Visa debit card that I can use in store or online using a chip, PayWave, or the card details. Anywhere that accepts Visa will accept the DOSH card. And when I spend using the card, DOSH offers a whopping 1% cashback on all eligible spending. Here is a list comparing your current cashback options in the market. Only the TSB credit card comes close to what DOSH offers, but A, TSB is a credit card, while DOSH is a debit, and B, you'd have to spend at least $1,700 a month on the TSB credit card before it offers better value, as it has a $90 annual fee, while DOSH is free. So with the 1% cashback and no annual fees, if you spend $1,000 in a month, DOSH puts $10 straight back into your wallet balance each month. To top up your DOSH wallet, you have three options. For instant top-ups, you have Windcave, charging a simple flat fee of 70 cents for the convenience. Second, you have bank transfers, where you can send money to their bank accounts, just like with Sharesies, for free. And thirdly, they have a new feature, where you can request a personal DOSH bank account number, where your salary can go directly into your DOSH wallet. I personally just use the bank transfer option, unless I've forgotten to make a transfer transfer in advance, in which case I'd use Wincave. Another feature is once you've made a transaction, such as this one here for Subway, you can click the split button. This allows you to essentially request payment from others in the app. This is useful if you're in a flat and have shared bills, or go to those annoying restaurants which don't let you split a bill. Or if someone owes you money, you can directly request it through the app, and they can pay you using their Dosh wallet instantly. Dosh easily solves all of these situations. And finally, Dosh also offers lucrative offers through the app. Currently, Dosh have tie-ups with Milk Run, Lululemon, Puma, Skitches, among others, offering 
offering cash back as high as 10% at these stores, on top of the 1% you get as standard. These features alone make Dosha really enticing service for the underserved New Zealand market. 1% cash back on spending, a Visa debit card with no annual charges, simple splitting of bills, and offers from several leading brands. With Apple Wallet and Google Pay on the way, what's not to like. After spending, we have Savings, which was recently launched on the app. As I've mentioned earlier, Dosh have stashes and Strive accounts. First up are stashes, which allow you to stash money aside for various bills such as rent, subscriptions, transport, groceries, anything you like, and you can create separate accounts for each. This is recommended practice by many personal finance gurus such as Scott Pape, the Barefoot Investor. They recommend once you get paid, you allocate your money into separate buckets or accounts to ensure you don't spend the money before the bills come due. Dosh makes this super easy, allowing you to open up to 20 accounts. Strive accounts, on the other hand, are like savings accounts, and in the month of May, Dosh has upped the interest rate to 5%, which is higher than what many of the banks are currently offering. Unlike a term deposit, you can also make unlimited withdrawals and move money in and out as much as you like. The only catch, of course, as it is a savings account, is that the balance at the end of each month must be greater than the previous month. This encourages you to use the account as a vehicle to grow your savings towards a specific goal. If your balance drops from month to month, for example if you needed to tap into the funds in an emergency, the return still drops to a respectable 1.5% at the time this video was made. To move money into your stashes and strive accounts, you can do it easily in the app, just like internet banking. Simply select the account you want to move the money from and the account you want to move the money to, then slide to transfer. Easy as. The funds are also securely held on trust with a registered local bank. So that's the saving features. And finally, we have borrow. This is a really new feature of Dosh, allowing users to apply within the app for short-term debt. The provider of the debt is Advanti Finance, one of New Zealand's largest finance companies. They offer interest rates between 16.25 and 19 0.95%, a balance between two and $75,000, in terms between one and seven years. They also charge a few fees for the service, namely the $140 for Avanti to establish the loan, $100 to Dosh to act as the broker, and an admin fee for processing each payment. Make no mistake, this is cold hard debt and should only be used responsibly. I, for example, will never use this feature as I prefer to save up and pay for things in cash or through easily managed credit card debt for points. The only benefit here is that you can manage your debt alongside your spending and savings accounts, which may encourage paying off debt faster. A feature on its way to Dosh is home loans, allowing you to apply for home loans through the app. This will be one to watch as they face a lot of competition from the increasing prevalence of mortgage advisors that may offer a more personal touch. To round out the video, here is my honest thoughts. Dosh is a service that I personally use and have a great experience with. My American Express AirPoints card offers better rewards, but as many of you know, Amex isn't accepted by most shops. Costco, for example, don't accept Amex, but Dosh works every single time. Another example are my insurers that charge extra for using Amex. And let's keep in mind as well, Dosh is a free card, whereas Amex charge me $195 every single year. So this is where Dosh steps in with their universally accepted Visa card and the fact they charge no annual fees. If you like the Dosh app, make sure to sign up using my code 00030886 during registration. I've included a link down below and in the video description. Using my code really helps the channel and I'll be sending a free gift to one of my lucky viewers that signs up. If you're new to my channel, I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. We're getting better, but 85% of my viewers are still yet to subscribe. So make sure to hit that button down below and I can make more content just like this. Thanks as always for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.